Harsh light, wrong times. Is it possible to get shots when the conditions aren't ideal? That's what we're going to do today. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. And today you join me on a beach I've not been to before, but I'm here also at the complete wrong time. Now, the idea that I want to try and do today is a bit of a gamble. I want to go over here onto these rocks and I want to be able to go for some long exposure shots. Now, with the light that's there, I know it's going to be a nice sunset, but I'm here early, so I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a go and challenge myself. And that's something that I love to do, is I love to put myself in a situation that's not normal and see, can I pull out some shots? So, we're going to take the walk across these rocks. I probably won't film going across them because there are kind of ups and downs and quite slippery, but I'll talk to you once I get out here and then we'll see how we go from there. Let's go. Now I've taken the short walk over here towards the edge where I want to go and there's an old fence actually just, just over here to my left hand side that I might include in a composition but what I'm looking to try and do if I can come down here and hopefully I don't fall um, what I'm doing is coming down here to have a look at these rocks that are there because there's a nice sheen off them from the sunlight that's directly above and then I'm getting some rather large waves actually that are coming in so I'm going to plan to get down low down here and have my image with this pool of water below me but then these rocks and hopefully I can get a shot out of that from my first composition anyway. The tide is going out so I need to be rather quick but with this harsh light tide going out not ideal uh, conditions time of day as well but nonetheless like I said I want to challenge myself and hopefully I manage this. So yeah let me get set up here and then I'll talk you through what I get at that point. Now, to start off with here, the advantage that I have with my filters, which is the case filters, they will be magnetic. And it doesn't mean I have to mess around with that at the front of the camera, I can put it on beforehand. Now, I'm going to pretty much wing it uh, here for my exposure time. I do want to get for as long as I could possibly get. Um, so, by doing that, when I put this on, it should allow me to be able to get a relatively long exposure. Once I get it set up here, I'm going to talk you through um, the timing that it gives me but I'll take off my glasses so that I can see and now okay yeah so I think this is actually going to work so I'm going to whack up my exposure time to 30 seconds first and foremost because that's what I want to aim for next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my aperture and I'm going to bring that down so right now I'm at f11 it's still blown out uh, so f16 is still blown out and if I drop my ISO down to 50 uh, 
I think I'm still going to be too bright. So let me just bring this here from a test point of view. I'm going to bring it up to F20. It tells me it's just slightly underexposed. And then I'm going to change my composition here slightly just to get a bit more of the water as it comes in below me here. I'm at 16 mil currently and I've got the sun just out of the frame. Now, from a focus point of view, I am going to go into automatic focus um, and I'm going to focus one third into the scene. So these rocks that are here in front of me. So if I focus on that here, I'm going to let this take a shot, two second timer so that I don't get any uh, shake whatsoever. What I'm hoping for is I get movement of water as around these rocks and then the ones that are just in front here will have that sheen. But I might put on my polarizer as well because it will take away any glare that's below me as well here. But after I just do my quick uh, test shot now, um, I think it might work out, but I've had to put my f-stop up high as well because like I said, it is quite bright and quite harsh. But the way it stands, I'm using it as a curve around here. I've got some of the rocks that are below me. And now looking at this here, yeah, I think the concept is nice, but it is overexposed. So yeah, I'll give you a look actually at the overexposed image here, and then I'm going to put on the other filters and try and tame that light. Now with my filters here, I have my polarizer. So all I have to do is, I won't find a safe place for this, uh, is take off my 10 stop, pop on my polarizer, and then I'll be able to look and say, okay, how am I going to polarize this image? Now I can put back on my 10 stop momentarily, and then I can twist that and I can see how this is affecting the image. I want to make the area that's in front of me as dark as possible. That's fine, okay. So now I can take back off my um, my 10 stop and I can now put on my six stop. So I have on this effectively three filters, my polarizer, my 10 stop and my six stop. And that should help me to be able to tame this light. So already I'm looking at this in 30 seconds, it's telling me that it's underexposed. I can change my ISO now back to 100. And now if I look at this, I'm at F8, which is overexposed. So again, F12 actually. So take that shot now again, focusing one third into the frame. And now I'll take this second shot. Hopefully this one will work out. It's a bit hard for me to see on the back of the camera here with the glaring light. And obviously my sunglasses are polarized, so I can't see the screen. But yeah, once this finishes cooking, uh, 30 seconds, uh, F12, then I will show you that shot next. Now I'm watching the waves as they're coming in out here and then I'm timing my shot around those waves because I want to have as much movement as possible here with enough water anyway, rather than just be flat. I am having to deal with the sun that's coming out from behind the clouds and giving me a sheen right in front of me here. Now, it is handling it okay, but I may end up with a hot spot uh, in the image here. Now, I've also changed my settings. Uh, I'm at F8, I'm at 30 seconds, and I've dropped my ISO to 50. Now, earlier on when I said F12, I know what I was thinking. It was F13, F12 doesn't exist. <laughs> but anyhow, like this now here, when this one's coming in, now I'll just take the shot. And that water now is going to cascade over these rocks that are here. And again, within this 30 seconds, I think this next wave should come through as well. And that I think will also flow in here. If I can get some nice separation between the uh, water below me and this water that's coming in, or the rocks below me rather, I think it will be a nice shot. But yeah, here's the next one here now at the adjusted settings. And yeah, I'm going to find a different composition, I think, then after that, hopefully the cloud stays behind, or the sun stays behind some clouds rather, uh, and I get some nice shots. But yeah, look at this one now coming in here, look. I'm going to wait actually, and I'm going to grab that again. So that now is going to come in here, I think, and reach me, and it should fill this entire area then uh, with water as it passes through. So yeah, we'll see how we go. It's fun anyway to challenge yourself.
Now, for my next one here, I've come over further and I'm framing up here with this water, which is actually really nice now coming in all around me. And I've got this kind of a single solitary rock up on the right hand side here, which I think is going to catch the light perfectly. Now, what I want to try and achieve here is to be able to have all of this movement, but utilizing these rocks that with the long exposure will give an ethereal look as such. Now, when I look at this here, um, it's trying to focus and it can't find focus. So let me see now if I can get this done. So now we've got focus, but I've got no wave. So I'm gonna watch again on the horizon, a couple of big ones that are coming in. They probably won't reach me in the 30 seconds that I'm exposing for. But if I get a nice shot here, I think it will be really nice with all of this movement of the water as it comes crashing over these rocks. If it does uh, turn out actually, I'll give you a look at that shot now. Next, I'll wait for the right wave so you don't have to. And like this one, hopefully, uh, if we get this, and I've got the exposure, which I do. So hopefully I'll get that movement now as well um, within the shot. So yeah, here's the next one now. And yeah, we'll see what else we can find. The size of that one. I'm lucky I moved back there. That was a big one that was coming in. I might have gotten splashed, but it might have actually filled what I want. A couple of nice big rogue waves that are coming in there. Now, I've decided to try and go for a um, half a second exposure, and I've just taken off my 10 stop. I've got my three stop on, and I also have my polarizer on as well. And I'm gonna go back there again now, and I'm gonna try and grab that shot because I do think that will be nice. I like the shapes that are within that rock, but obviously I don't want to get wet. So yeah, I'm gonna go back over here. Settings will be at probably a quarter of a second, actually. Uh, F11 and my ISO will be at 50. And I'll give you a look at that one then as well after that. As the tide is going out, it is revealing more of the rocks here below me. And each of those is adding into the different types of compositions. As I look around me here, I see more as well that I want to play around with and take some different shots. But I'll give you a look at a couple of shots any I've taken here, and then I'm gonna find another spot and I'll tell you then what I've done at that point. But they generally seem to be long exposures that I'm leaning to today. So it's been a while since I 
checked in and I've taken a number of different types of shots. I kind of made a scramble uh, across these rocks here and some of the textures that I've discovered are absolutely incredible. It reminds me of my time when I spent with Michael Shane Bloom and I think he'd love all of the textures that are here within the rocks. And then it also reminds me of the time I spent with Gavin because Gavin would say, what are you afraid of? Just get in, get taters deep in the water, get the shot. But I don't really want to get into the water uh, today. It's still quite cold. We don't have warm weather here in Ireland, Gavin. But um, I've taken a couple of shots of the water again as it's flowing in over these rocks and then also going back out again. There's one actually below me here that I really, really like and I'm going to go back now and get the camera and see can I, can I capture it with the shot. But it is difficult because the sun now is blazing, as you can see, on me. So it's very difficult to be able to get a uh, exposure that works. I've done a number of different types actually but what I've found I've liked is cutting out the sky completely to avoid that sunlight. Now I do have to deal with it obviously reflecting off the water but nonetheless the long exposures for me are working out quite nice. They may stay colour, they might end up in black and white, I don't know, we'll see what it's like when I get to the uh, editing suite but yeah I think it is definitely a challenge to take shots in very very harsh conditions like I have um, right now with everything effectively going against me. However, I do think that I have been successful. I'm going to finish up this episode. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. If it's the first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlong the fold.